but we really just have a few hours to go as it were before GST rolls out. It's being called one of the most ambitious tax reforms in the history of independent India. And it's a great pleasure to have with us the man who's really been spearheading it, driving it. If it's a really complicated, complex task, then he and his team have been really working to put it all together. So it's with great pleasure that I'd like to welcome the Revenue Secretary, Mr. Haspakadia, who's, I have to say, sir, looking remarkably calm considering just how much behind-the-scenes activity there must be right now. And for starters, our, com our compliments and congratulations for all the work that has been done by you to roll this out. Thank you very much, Vikram. But uh, if you think that I'm calm, it is mainly because of my team, because my team is uh, outstanding in terms of the work output they give it to me, in terms of their intelligence, in terms of their cooperative uh, attitude. So I'm really lucky to have such a team. But as the person who's spearheading it, are you nervous at all right now? Is not at all. Work? Not at all, because you've done enough for it. And we are quite confident that whatever amount of hard work we have put in, will definitely bear fruits. So I just wanted to understand, given where you are right now, how ready are we? Because it's just like, what, 30 hours, 35 hours to go before GST rolls out. How ready are we? What still needs to be done? What are the last minute behind the scenes activities that are taking place? We have made a checklist of what all we need to do before 30th of June. And uh, we have been rigorously following it up. And that checklist is almost coming to an end now. Whatever activities we were supposed to do by 30th, we have already done it. Okay. Um, so just to understand, you had to notify some things which you've done yesterday. Many of the states still have to no make notifications, and all of that has to be done in the next uh, you know, couple of days. Some of the states have expressed reservations saying, are we completely ready or not, West Bengal in particular, Kerala. Are they on board? Are they going to be able to also meet the deadline? No, no. As far as the governments are concerned, even of those states, uh, they are fully ready and uh, all the states, they would be issuing their notification today or tomorrow. And tomorrow we have the meeting of council in the evening, so we have requested them to bring copies of all the notifications so that we can make sure that nothing is missed. Uh, what they must be talking about is probably the preparedness on the part of some of the traders. That's it. If you can understand what it takes to get this thing done, there's all the notifications, all the laws have to come. Of course, constitutional amendment has already happened. But it's also a massive technical and a technological task, the putting together of the network. And everyone has to be compliant to be on the network. That, people are still wondering whether that's going to be ready at all. And are you expecting a period where people will not be ready? There will be traders who will not be ready. There will people be people who will not have access to online systems. There is absolutely no new requirement we have brought in this. Absolutely no new requirement. What we are saying is, today also, please understand, our requirement is that you have to register online. And today, all the things are online. If you have to register for an IIT exam, or if you have to register for a post of a teacher in a school, every state, every government of India uh, uh, vacancy requires you to file it online. So registration is online, which everybody can do. The second thing is, we are saying return filing is online. We are not saying, unfortunately, there is a lot of misimpression being created that there is a real-time invoice matching. There is no real-time invoice matching in which we are asking ki, the moment you create an invoice, you put it inside the computer, on the internet. Not at all. All we want is ki, at the end of the month, they will file their return in computer. That's all. And today also, if you ask me, there are f four crore people who file I income tax uh, online. The return is filed online by 99.9% .9 people now in income tax. And all these traders, we have got only 60, 70 lakh traders who are supposed to do it. And all of them would be filing their income tax return online. So there's nothing new for them. In many of the states, even the VAT returns are online. Excise returns and service tax returns are also online. So that return filing online is not a new experience for anybody. So there's nothing new about which they have to get prepared. So I'm going to actually, over the next 10, 15 minutes, just ask, well, everyone has these questions, what is in it for me, first of all? We know what it is, there is for the country, and I'm going to ask you that. But traders want to know what's in it for us. Consumers want to know what's going to happen to us. Prices are going to go up, prices are going to go down, and so on and so forth. So let's just look at each of those uh, step by step. And now that we've started to talk about the traders, um, you yourself are saying, and this is what many of the state governments have said, that they are not completely ready. Do They don't necessarily have the invoice tracking in their own level. Can they really track all the inputs that are coming in to get the input credits? 
how much of that work at the end of the day is still left because unlike the other things which are happening once a year, here many people are going to have to file those returns fairly frequently, once a month. It depends on their size of course. Well, uh, frequency of return is always once in a month in wet regime also. And it was online even in many of the state governments like in Gujarat, Maharashtra, everywhere it was online filing only, return filing. All we are saying is, e and even the invoice wise detail filing is required in many states today. There are many states which had started invoice wise uh, return filing. But that also does not apply to everybody. Look, out of say 70, 80 lakh uh, dealers, uh, taxpayers that we would be having, 80 percent of them would be B2C dealers. They are the small retailers, not small, small and big retailers. Even if you have got a departmental store and if you are only B2C uh, dealer, you have to file only total details of your turnover. You are not supposed to file invoice wise details. Mm. So, there is no extra requirement that we have put in. Only if you are giving your goods to B2B, then because the other person needs to take input tax credit of goods which you have sold to him, that is why there is a requirement of invoice wise filing. And that also once in a month. We are not saying that you have to do it immediately as soon as you create an invoice. It is okay. only once in a month in your return you have to show invoice wise detail. So, this for example is one of the areas and perhaps I could get you to just explain this a little because it is one of the areas that a lot of people are somewhat concerned about. The fact that at a certain size you are filing, having to file three returns every month plus some, uh, some other forms there. So, people are sitting and calculating that, that is 36 returns in a year that I am going to have to file plus other returns and it is going to be a headache. Now, I know that a couple of them are computer generated and they just have to check that out, but perhaps I could get you to just explain why was that really necessary and maybe you could have found a slightly less scary way of putting it rather than GSC return Actually, 1, return 2, return 3. Actually, it is a problem of communication. I only wish now that rules have been made, uh, we cannot change it uh, immediately. But I wish it should have been called GSTR 1, 2, 3. Instead of 1, 2, 3, we should have called it GSTR 1A, 1B, 1C. In which case, this complication would not have been felt by people. That Basically, there 36, how many returns are it? 36 to 39? No, no, there, there is only one return per month, of which there are three parts. Okay. One part of sales detail, the dealer is supposed to uh, make a data entry of. The second part and the third part are all generated by computer and shown to you only to ensure that there is no mistake. That is only a facility we are giving to the customer. To so, the you are filing taxpayer. one return. One return per one month. Return. One return. And the other two returns are computer generated. You are supposed to look at them and verify that it is correct. I would say that the other two parts of the same return are generated by computer and shown to you. So, it is one return for one month. I am filing, if I am a taxpayer, I am filing all my sales detail and based on everybody filing their sales detail, I will automatically get details of purchases I have made in the computer because the person to, from whom I have bought, he would have put his details. So, based on his detail, I would get it in my purchase side. So, the second part of the return is purchase detail which is computer generated and we call it GSTR2. So, there is nothing that I have to do except to check all my purchases are there. If there is a transaction missing, I can add that facility is given to me that I can just review it and if there is one voucher also missing, I can add it and then I can accept it. So, you simply click and accept. There is no requirement on your part to file anything. And then the third return based on your sales and the purchase is exactly indicating your total tax liability and that can be accepted by you. You have to simply accept it and pay it. That is it. Nothing more to be done. So, you are thinking of changing the name at some point? It could have, it could, yeah, it could have actually worked better if you had said it is a one return, three parts, one part you fill up, two parts computer will give you. I wish uh, that would have been better to. It may have made it slightly less daunting. Because yeah. that is really the crux of the criticism for all the, for all the benefits that people think JST is going to lead to and that it probably will. The crux of the criticism has been that has it ended up becoming too complicated a system in its implementation in India and perhaps there were reasons for it and the GST council insisted on it, not just the many forms of the returns and all of that that has come up, but also the multiplicity of rates because now you are going to have to track 0 percent and 5 percent and 12 percent and 18 percent and 28 percent. So, looking back again at it, would not it have been better if you could have just got maybe two rates or three rates, a demerit rate and a merit rate or combined 0 and 5 percent and combined 12 and 18 percent, something like that? Well, if we do it, it would be highly regressive to the poor people. If we combine the two rates, what happens is that the rich people rate will come to the median level and the poor people will have to go up. 
So it will be more regressive in nature if we try to combine the two uh, four slabs into. If you combine one. it all to one rate, then what you're saying is correct. Yeah, even two rates. Even, what if you had even three rates? What if you had, for example, a zero no, percent, zero uh, percent, a medium rate, and then a demerit rate for sin goods or whatever they have. Okay. If you did so that, so suppose suppose we have a median rate of say eight percent instead of five percent, then all the essential commodities which are now in five percent. There is a huge list of commodities which are in 5 percent at state level and there is no excise duty on them. That would come to 8 percent. So, for example, edible oil. Edible oil is a consumption highly… Uh, you could move it to 0 percent. No, but that will be revenue, that will not be revenue neutral. How much of items can you put in 0 percent? Yeah. So, the question is we have to balance it against the interest of the poor people. Uh, we have to balance it in favor of the uh, interest of the poor people. We have to also see the revenue neutral position that our revenue should not suffer. So, taking all that into account to begin with we have started with four slabs, but believe me today there are so many rates of excise duty also. Mm. It is not four slabs in excise duty, there are so many rates of excise duty and every state has got a different rate of tax on different items. So, if somebody is operating all India you can imagine a company like uh, ITC or Hindustan Unilever that yeah. every state they have a different uh, rate to follow and the uh, billing and transfer of goods to those states. For the same commodity, they have to have 31 different uh, rates uh, to be followed.